Hey guys, today I'm going to show you five tips and tricks that will enhance your experience with Affinity Designer. All right, so here we are inside Affinity Designer. This is desktop version for Mac, but all tricks and tips from this video will work also on Windows or even on iPad. All right, let's move to the first one. So my first tip for you is to copy and paste your layer styles. That's also possible here in Affinity. Some people are coming switching from Adobe. If they apply layer style to all the shape or to the text first, to do that, you can simply click on the shape and then here, FX. So we got multiple layer effects. I already add some to this one, to this shape. As you can see, we got shadow, we got inner glow and stuff like that. So I did it all once. And let's say I need exactly the same style on the another shape. Of course, you can try to memorize everything you did and do it by hand, but you can also copy and paste the style. And people coming from Adobe, they usually try to do it by right clicking on the layer and they are searching for something like copy style, paste style. And as you can see here, it's missing on this list. So people assume it's not possible in Affinity Designer, but it is. It's actually pretty simple. So you just need to click on the shape with the style you like and make a copy, like classic copy, like come and see on your keyboard or you can go to edit and then copy. All right, so we copy the whole shape. Now we click on the second shape and here go to edit. We got classic paste, it will give me the duplicate of the shape I copy, but we can also paste only style or paste all FX. So if I paste style, take a look, I paste everything. Effects and color of the object. Undo, let's try again. This time I will paste only effects. So I now I keep my original color and copy the effects from this shape. So keep that in mind, you can simply copy and paste your layer styles. Click on the object, copy, click on the second object and then go to edit, paste, effects. All right, so that was my first trick that can improve your workflow. The second thing you should know about is isolation mode. Sometimes you will have a really complex composition and you need to focus on one thing to polish, to modify this one element you can cut out everything else by using isolation mode. To do that, hold option key on your keyboard and then click on the layer you want to isolate. Everything else will temporarily disappear. While I'm holding option, I can also switch to different layers. All right, so I can work only on one object at a time. If you wanna go back, simply click on the canvas and we are back in classic normal mode. All right, so by holding option and clicking on selected layer, you can isolate that object temporary. All right, tip number three, stock studio. There is built-in stock studio here, but you need to turn it on manually. So you must go up here to view, select studio and pick stock this way you will have this pop-up window floating and from here you can search for free images free stock images so you can type something here in the search box and then you can simply drag and drop free stock photos to your projects to your composition as you can see now it's loading we got also information about the photographer here the size of it and here's my image over here, let me zoom out so we can see it. It's huge. <laughs> All right, so here's the image I was able to get directly from inside Affinity Designer. So I don't need to leave Affinity Designer, go to web browser, search for stock pictures. You can use this built-in stock studio, especially handy when you are on iPad or device that is a smaller screen and you don't wanna divide the screen into web browser and Affinity Designer, so very handy stuff. And as you can see here, there's also vector options. So if you 
click that, you will be searching for vectors as well. So you can search for both raster, graphic, photos and vectors. All right, very nice addition. So keep in mind there's a stock studio built-in that we can use in any given moment. All right, next thing we need to talk about view modes. There are several view modes that you can switch between to help yourself. The basic one here is the vector view mode with the infinity zoom, right? So even I zoom really close, I cannot see any pixels here. Everything is in vectors. Very often, while you're designing stuff in vectors, at the end of the day, you will create some kind of raster image out of it. So we can check this out. We can check our raster output by changing view mode. So I click view here at the top and there is a whole section called view mode. We got different view modes here. Let's talk about pixels. If I click on that, I will be previewing my art as the raster graphics. So as you can see now, I can see pixels based on the size of my artboard. So you can kind of evaluate your final output based on that. All right, so we can got this pixel preview, but we can also change our view mode to outline. And that's very helpful. If you've got very complex photorealistic vector illustration, outline will be super helpful. So we cannot see any colors any effects, only outlines of shapes, of fonts and objects here. So that's very helpful. We can switch to outline whenever we need to work on the curve, adjust some curves, adjust some shapes. Very handy. So this is our outline mode. Normally we are in vector one. And as you may notice here, there's also one more thing we can talk about, split view. In split view, you will split your screen. You can move that and you can jump in between pixel view and vector view. So as you can see, on the left, I can see my art as vector. On the right, I can see my art as pixel based image. What will happen after I explore, export this to PNG or JPEG? All right, so you can also split view to inspect your work. All right, so don't hesitate to use different view modes to enhance your experience with the program. All right, and our final tip number five, smart shapes. That's something that people keep forgetting about, especially people that switching to Affinity Designer from different apps, because many vector apps support basic shapes only. So we got square and circle and triangle, let's say polygon tool usually that we can turn into triangle and sometimes star so many people get used to having only those four shapes and they working around that limitation in affinity designer take a look we got so many different pre-made shapes and all of them on this list are smart shapes what does it mean take a look segment tool for example We got this orange control points. We can also have controls here at the top of the tool, at the bar here. But let's focus on this orange control points. Let me zoom in. So if I drag this orange control point, I can modify the shape. This is smart control. And this is something you cannot do with normal classic circle. So that's really handy. Many people just get used to having basic shapes. So if you tell them to get a half of the circle, they need to go to operation. I can do it like that. But some people go like old method. So they will draw the circle, put something at the top, and then they will try to, they will try to cut out this circle using operations here, like subtract. Okay, we got half of the circle. As you can see, Using smart shapes, you can do it much faster. And there are many, many different smart shapes with smart controls. Take a look. We got star, for example. We can change number of points. And we can also adjust stuff later on. Whenever you see orange control points, there are smart shape control points. We can really play with them. 
we can do something even like this. Take a look. Just a few clicks away from normal start tool. We got something like this. All right, so there are many different smart shape tools ready to use. We don't need to build all shapes from scratch. Take a look. The other day I saw someone asking how to do this shape in, I think, designer on like Facebook group. There's a smart tool for it. You can do it anytime you want just by dragging this little orange control point as you please. All right, so keep that in mind. We got multiple smart shape tools and people keep forgetting about them like this one this one is really powerful there are many things we can control here one two three four five different orange points all of them control one aspect of the shape in addition you can change the number here all right take a look we altered the shape greatly, just a few clicks away, a few control modification away. Okay, so that's my final tip for today. Use smart shapes to improve your workflow, to speed up your workflow. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoy this style of video. If you want to learn more tips or tricks for Affin Designer or for any other software, let me know in the comment below. Keep in mind, I post two tutorials like this per week so please consider subscribing to my youtube channel and i will see you in the next one bye bye